and welcome to Christie's Stamping Spot. This is the card that we're going to make today. It's not a super totes adorbs. Oh, I love this set. So if you have your um, August to December mini catalog on page um, 62, there is the Have a Hoop Bundle. And it has um, this little bitty guy and like his little family on a branch with little hats and a vampire or cosplaying owl with his little cape. Um, there's a little owl with pumpkin and these two under the mistletoe and this one with the spider. So definitely looks like it's winter, Halloween, Christmas. But you can do other things with this. And so I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to use a little masking technique. And that's how I made this super cute. So what's interesting about this bundle is that um, the dies, they don't cut out the whole scene. They just cut out the owls. So if you see here how um, it's a little bit darker in the, um, with the image, so all those images stamp out. Let's see if I can see another one where it shows where there are only a few of them. Like here, this one, see how this, this on this page, right, this, everything is essential, how these are um, a darker, it's got like a white around it. That's because these images um, punch out. So that was with the white, but with the darker around it means that um, they have dyes that match. So all of these have dyes, but like I said, the dyes only cut out the owl and not the scene behind it. And what it is is it creates a really fun effect where you can make them pop out. So that's what I've done here is the little owls are popping out off the tree. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And then I did use the branch. As you can see, the branch from that scene behind, but I didn't have the mistletoe. So I'm going to actually use a masking technique and show you guys how to do that so that you can help get your fabulous, even though it's, it's a um, more of a holiday set, you can make it work for all kinds of things. Um, I love these owls. These are so super cute. Okay, so if you've gone on to my website, you know that I I've, I've, um, have my blog post is already up and it has the instructions and you can do it in two options and it's at the bottom of the blog is um, with pictures or without pictures. And so that has all the measurements, um, all the hyperlinks to purchase in my online store, and then the directions It's for my blog. So what you need to get started, I'm going to get all my stuff. I'm so excited. You know, the new Cut and Emboss um, machine is, avail is available as well as our fabulous, um, the new magnetic plate. And I haven't tried it yet, but it's on order. It's supposed to be here tomorrow. So I'm very excited to play with that. But you need to start with um, Coastal Cabana, which I love. Coastal Cabana is such a fun. I mean, I know that we're starting to get into the autumn season, but it's still so hot here in Arizona, although it's supposed to be cooler. Um, I think we're going to have a cooler trend coming next week, but it's supposed to be super hot. We're in excessive heat warning, I think, for the weekend. So Coastal Cabana, very cool, like a cool summer. That's what it seems like to me. So I've actually embossed it. So this is a regular... Um, Eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock that I've cut in half, the four and the quarter, and then scored it five and a half. So, um, and then I've just run the first, the front part of it with my um, Tasteful Textile 3D. And when you do your card fronts, you can totally do your card fronts. I just lay my, my card in here like this, and so it hangs out a little bit like that, and it runs it through. And that's how I get my fabulous... Um, texture that's on here. That way I don't have to add another layer of cardstock, especially if you're going to be mailing your cards. You won't want to be too thick or too heavy. And I wanted to add the foam. Um, I used the, uh, the adhesive foam strips, which make it a little bit thick, and, but I love it how it keeps this nice, the um, watercolor paper um, adhered really nice and straight, which is why I really like using the foam strips with the watercolor paper. Okay, so once you've got that done, um, you need to cut your uh, watercolor paper. And so we're going to do that first before we do any of the other stuff because we need to let it dry. All right, so I've already had cut my um, watercolor paper. Now, we sell um, 100 fluid paper. I think it might still be on back order. I think that if you have a nicer um, grain, this is a, uh, another piece of the older, the, the, the cardstock that we used to have, watercolor um, paper. You can probably use any of your watercolor paper, although I love ours, but if you can't get it. Anyway, this one's cut at um, just four and a half by three and a half. 
And I'm just going to use my water painters to give it a little bit of a color wash. So I've gone ahead and got some, let me protect my surface a little bit. So I just put a paper towel down and um, my um, piece of watercolor paper. And I'm going to use my water, um, water painters. So we used to have the aqua painters, but now we have these fabulous water painters. And um, just like this, they come in three different sizes and it has a fine tip and like a big a big brush and then a medium sized brush and we're actually going to use the medium sized brush today so i'm going to put these back on here do, do, do. and when and just keep in mind when you're filling these if you haven't gotten them before you have to go counterclockwise to open it and clockwise just like that to keep it and then i like to start it first a little bit as you can see there we go there's a little bit of the water and that's why i need to have the nice um paper towels down so that you make too much of a mess. But we're going to use, you can use your ink refillers to make um, your ink wells, but I'm just going to use the lids of my um, ink pads. So I'm going to use some Coastal Cabana and Pacific Point. Actually, Pacific Point is going to go first. A little bit of Highland Heather. And then the um, Magenta Madness. I'm trying to use this Magenta Madness. It's a great hot paint color. But I wasn't really sure about it. And I really like the way it looks on here. Okay, so first you need to lay down a little bit of water. So just um, get used to how much water your brush um, puts down so that you know when you're um, using the color. You definitely want to get your paper wet first. So make sure it's nice and damp. You don't want it pooling, the water pooling on there. You definitely want it a little bit damp. Oops, just like that. And then I'm going to start with the, the Pacific um, Point, the darker blue. And I'm just going to point it right here. And as you can see, with a little bit of the water, a little bit more water. Just like that. Isn't that pretty. Now I'm not going to do a really dark wash. I just want it It's a little bit darker on the edge there. I'm just going to have it bleed through just a little bit just to there, as you can see. Then I'm just going to clean that off a little bit. And then I'll get my, let that dry a little bit. I don't want to get the water onto my pad. Do -do -do. And then this is the Coastal Cabana. And I definitely like the Coastal Cabana because that's actually the color um, of the cardstock. So I definitely want to make sure that this color is showing through. So I'm just blending it up to the um, Pacific Point, just like that, love, 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 so this is kind of fun to do, but you are going to need to make sure that it's completely dry, okay, and then I'm going to use, I'm going to clean that off a little bit, Ooh, let's get a little bit right here on this one, okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of this Highland Heather, the Highland Heather has got a little bit of a gray tone, so it is a nice kind of blend between the Coastal Cabana and um, the Magenta Madness, that bright pink. It's nice. It's a nice kind of it's a grayish, um, light purple. It's really pretty, pretty, pretty. Can you see that? It's so awesome. And then a little bit of the Magenta Madness. So now just be careful as this is the end and tell that your paper is dried a little bit already. So you might want to apply more water so that it blends really nice all the way down. And of course, you can add as much color if you want it much darker, but I kind of wanted a softer wa color wash. So just like that. Okay, so now the important part is I'm going to have to let's put all my stuff away. And then we need to let this dry. So we're going to let this dry while we do the rest of the card. And then to build. Okay, so there's not too much. There's a little bit of, if you get a little bit too much water, just use your paper towel to get it off a little bit. I think there's none on this one. Or this one. Get a little bit too much water on the, um, the specific point. So let me doo -doo -doo, sop it up a little bit. I don't want it to get all drippy everywhere. There we go. 
why have a uh, such a good idea. Okay, so I don't have, I didn't get that too wet. So put that away. All right, so now we're done and we won't need these colors again. We're just using that just for our pretty color wash. And then I'm just gonna set this aside so it can dry while we do the rest of um, the card, okay? All right, so um, we've already embossed our card front. So now we need to do um, our cute little uh, owls. All right, so I've already cut um, this, uh, the background layer um, in the Coastal Cabana and I went ahead and also um, dry embossed it with the textile, the Tasteful Textile 3D paper, or 3D embossing folder to give it this kind of fabulous textured paper. I love this, so pretty. Um, and the dye that I used is the Hippo and Friends dyes. So those Hippo and Unicorn, I think it's a lamb, the stamp set is super cute, but these dyes are fabulous. So look at the dyes. So I use this, the biggest dye is what I used to cut this one out. And then I'm gonna use the smaller dye, the, the, the medium size one, to cut out my owls um, on that. So that is, and that's super cute, I love, love, love. Okay, so. That is the one that we're going to do, but I'm going to show you how you guys are we're going to do that. So the first thing I did was, um, for I went through and cut my owls out. So I like to cut my owls out before I color them. I did it a couple times. So you can see that sometimes it's a little hard to get it exactly right. Um, I'm really hoping the magnetic plate is going to help me keep my um, dye perfect. You can use washi tape or post-it note to hold your dye over top of your image, but I really hate is when you color one of these gorgeous things and then you, you run it through to cut it out and you accidentally get way too much white or it's off center a little bit. So I like to cut them out before I color them. Um, so I did it twice and you can see they're almost exactly the same. So actually it wasn't too hard, but I did it twice just to make sure. And um, we're gonna color that owl. So after I cut that out, we're gonna color the owl and then we're going to actually make sure I write on the, get on the right paper. Um, and that was, I, so for that, I just stamped it and then the die cut just, um, cuts out the, the owls. But if you, we want to, we're also wanting to cut out just the branch, right? So how do you do that? Okay. So all you need is, um, a post-it note and I'm going to just tear a little piece of the, so mostly it's just the sticky. Okay. And I'm just going to lay it over where I don't want it to stamp. So if you look, this one has um, some little stars or sparkles. So I wanted to keep a couple of the little sparkles, but I just want to cover up where the mistletoe is. So there I've got it just like this. Now, so that's pretty easy, right? We're gonna stamp it with our, our memento. So just get that nice and inked up, okay? The important trick is then you need to remove and throw this away. So make sure you get that off before you stamp, right? You make sure you, you move that before you stamp. And then I'm gonna stamp this right here in the middle, just like that, muy bien. See, so I was able to stamp it without um, the mistletoe. So now we've, we've just got two cuddling owls, which is super cute, right? Okay, so I didn't, one of the, also the things is when you color these, if you color any of the branches, um, it will come off when you cut out the little guys. So um, on here, I've got the branches and I'm just gonna color it with my blends. So this one we're gonna cut out and I'm just gonna die cut it out with, um, this right here. So let's color them first and then I'll move all this out of the way and show you guys. I'll use my, I'll actually get the cut and emboss out in here. Okay, so I, I have a protective surface down because I want to use my blends. I love, love the cinnamon um, cider. They're, they're my favorite for the, for these owls, but they are on back order. And so I wanted to show you guys, you can use, we've got the soft suede is another brown that you can use or um, the crumb cake. No, I got the gray. So I grabbed one of the crumb cakes and the other one is actually um, the dark gray, not the crumb cakes. Let me, I must have gotten those two confused, mixed up. I did, I put them back. 
or way the wrong way. Here we go. All right, there's the card game. So I'm just going to use the dark crumb cakes so that um, even though I love the 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 um, cinnamon cider, so when those go back, I think they're supposed to be back at the end middle of the month. I would totally get on and get those. Cinnamon cider is like my favorite. And the other one I'm going to use is the um, the dark daffodil delight for their eyes. Okay, so let me set that aside. And I'm not going to use the soft suede. I'll just use the, um, I'll just color with the crumb cake. And so with this one, I just did the whole thing, uh, the branch and the owl with the cinnamon. So I'm just going to do the same thing here with my um, dark crumb cake. If I can get the light open. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to color my branch. Color in a little bit. And I am going to color the outline of my owls here. So I'm going to go ahead and take, I'm going to take my lighter crumb cake. Well, yeah, let me take a lighter crumb cake. And I'm going to go around. So I'm going to um, just do a little bit on his their little talons, little feet there, and go around just on the outside edge in case they can see it. We're going to put the other piece on top. So you don't really have to do that, but I don't know why I kind of always have done it. Because it's going to fit right there on top. Okay. So that's our owl. Okay. And let's color our other owls. Do, do, do. Aren't they so sweet? They're so sweet, right? Okay, so in this one, I want to get the dark crumb cake out. And I'm going to go around. I'm going to do their eyelids dark with the dark crumb cake. And then just go around their feathers with the dark one. And then I'm going to go back in and color it with the, um, with the light crumb cake and blend it. So you can use any of your browns to color these owls. You can also use your watercolor pencils, like the blender pen. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and go all watercolor, you could, of course, stamp this in memento ink and then use your um, uh, your uh, water painters and watercolor paint them, which I guess I could have done. Actually, I'm going with the other, the other side. There we go. And I'm just blending it in, getting lots of color down. This is my older one. I think I grabbed the newer one. I think I actually put it back up in there. This one's about to give up my ghost. So anyway, I love these owls. They're so cute. So just like just giving it the little bit of the dark on the lines that, that um, you know that's provided on on the image helps give it a little bit more definition. So just go over that those lines. Use that as your um, your guide. So cute. Now you can color, I'm going to color his owl eyes with the daffodil, but you could leave them. And then just add the Wink of Stella. I am going to add the Wink of Stella, but I want to get that. There we go. Ah, so cute. Now, and it is important that you use, um, a piece to, to this now with the crumb cake it doesn't really bleed through as much but as like the cinnamon cider really bleeds through so you want to make sure um, you get those uh, you make sure you have something underneath so that it doesn't um, bleed through on your surface Doo -doo. love the blend so much And then if you go back over it again, you can add a little bit more color, give it a little bit more variation once it dries a little bit. So nice. I love, love, love. Okay. All right. Now we're going to cut this up. So I want to cut this out. So let me move all this stuff out of the way. 
you can see this is drying lovely and it's drying flat which is one of the fabulous things about um, this watercolor paper okay so I just want to make sure I get this out of the way so I don't lose those pieces and I'm gonna bring you my, show you my cut and boss machine okay she's so pretty I love her so much so pretty and like here she closes just like that it's very lovely wait till we get the tiny one too and it'll make it really easy to show you guys how to do stuff on here so she just opens up and they have all of the platforms are labeled all right right so this is the main platform which is the number one what you need and it shows on here that what you need for die cutting right so it says you need the number one then you need um the number two which is is the die shim which is this one right here and then you need two of your plates right so here it is those two and here's my other plate look you can see i need to get I, a new one just came today so i can get i'm really going to be using my plates and then you need a sep another one okay so we're going to put our our owl just like that and then i need my little die and you're going to stand up really quick does that make that better just make sure you get her in, get get them where you want in the middle. There we go. Just put your plate on top, just like that, and it slides so nice through. Muy bien. Love, love, love. I love, love my new machine. It snaps. Very nice. Very nice. Okay super cute and these um hippo uh and friends dies are really totes adorbs and it is a huge set of dies huge set huge set and with all of these look at how they layer so fabulously um these ones these ones and these ones so a lot of variety and then of course it cuts out all the cute little the critters from that stamp set which is really nice you gotta love that okay so here's our little owls okay and now our paper is dry it's awesome we can set that down and then here's our other owls that we've colored okay so you can really see the difference you can also use gray as well how I, I just really love the cinnamon but um because it's a little bit darker but it looks nice with the um with the crumb cake okay so how do we put this together? Okay, so first, now that my um, piece of wa watercolor wash uh, paper is dry, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to apply our, um, put our um, Coastal Cabana emboss layer down first. So I'm just gonna use some um, stamp and seal and just, I find that the stamp and seal worked really, really well. I'm just going to layer this on. And what's really fun about these dies, it has these little, um, almost, almost where you can put the, the, um, the ribbon. And we're actually going to use that kind of as our, our guide for how we're going to put our ribbon. So this is uh, some of the Magenta Madness in color ribbon. And that's really pretty, super fun, very soft ribbon and I'm just gonna we're not gonna do a bow we're just gonna do a soft I mean do a little um a tie that's it a tie knot so we're just gonna tie a knot as you can tell I didn't even cut it off my spool so I didn't waste too much just like that, so cute. Okay, and I will trim that up after I get it done. Okay, so just like that, super nice. That little tie, fabulous. Okay, and then so for this guy, we're just going to put him up on um, dimensionals. I'm just gonna use regular dimensionals. But I'm gonna leave no, I'm not gonna put any dimensionals right here in the middle, because that's where the, um, the ribbon is. 
Um, let's see, I have a bunch. So I am putting a lot of dimensionals on here. Let's see, make sure I have it. And I just don't want it to wobble. There we go. All right, cut those little things off. Put that on there. I just love this set. It's so super cute. So super cute. Okay. And then we're just going to put it on top just like that. So super cute. Okay. And then we're going to put the dimensionals on. And I am and down to the edges. I'm just going to use my paper snips. I use so many dimensionals. I can use, I like that these ones over here on this side are just a little smaller. So then I'm going to take my little owl, after I've got my dimensionals on him, and I'm just going to stick them right on top. Just like this. Pull it off. Oh, so cute. OMG, right? So cute, so cute. Okay. So then I can just see how it is. I think I want to make these smaller. Really am into the smaller um, little bows and do it at an angle. Try not to mess with this. I did find that this one frays a little bit if you mess with the ribbon too much. You don't want to mess with it too much. Some ribbon you can play with and play with and play with it and it won't fray. This one does a little bit. It looks so pretty. Oh my goodness. I love that. Just that little extra bit of pink. Okay. And then we're going to attach it to our card with the foam strips. So I love these foam adhesive strips. I don't use them as often as I probably should because as you can see it does give it a height. They are fabulous if you're going to make shaker cards. They're the perfect size for, um, for shaker cards. Actually, I think that's its main purpose is for the shaker cards. But I like to use it for the watercolor paper. Because um, I find that with the watercolor paper, I sometimes, um, it wants to bow. Um, Watercolor paper is so much better than um, if you try to use like thick whisper white. It gets even worse with the whisper white. So I'm just adding it. Just putting it over here on the edges. Actually, I think I put two in the middle. I said I like it to be really sturdy. like that and then you take it off and it adheres really nice to our um, embossed coastal cabana front all these little our little adhesive things I'm gonna sweep my floor because I have them everywhere love 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 <laughs> using lots and lots of dimensionals, then you have lots and lots of little, these little pieces that get everywhere. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna put that right here on our card front. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot. Oh, I was so entranced, I forgot to put, to stamp my sentiment. Oh no. Okay, so let's see, how can we make this work? I think I'm just gonna go ahead, put this on here. So I've already taken all of the paper off. I could just cut it. So I'm going to try it first. So I'm going to try to see if I can actually get it on here because it's pretty stable because I put so much dimensionals behind it. Um, otherwise, it'd probably be a best bet. If, I, if I, I'm going to do it, if I mess up, then we're going to just go ahead and stamp it on a piece of Whisper Right and cover it up. Hopefully, I can get it. Okay, so let's check. This is our happy anniversary. dark just right here in the corner oh 
It worked. <laughs> Look at that. Happy anniversary. Awesome sauce. So do that first. <laughs> Remember to stamp your um, uh, to stamp your happy anniversary before you build, um, before you put your um, dimensionals on it um, and putting it on your card. I just didn't even notice until after. And I noticed too that I'm a little crooked. Let's see if I can make it uncrooked. No, I don't think I'm gonna. There we go. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Oh, it's so cute. So cute. Okay. Then we need to add our, um, well, let's add our bling first and then I'll do the inside. Okay. So we're going to add some Wink of Stella to our owl's eyes. I love Wink of Stella. Just a little bit of sparkle. Super pretty. Oh. And then I'm using the Artistry Blooms um, sequins. I love these. They're like my new favorites. I want to put them on everything. And you might take pick tool and um, let's see. I'll put one up here. And I'll put one on sparkle. And put one down here on the sparkle. Another one on the sparkle. Two. There we go. Four. And I put another one on the other sparkle. I like to have odd numbers. I really love these. And these are Coastal Cabana. So they really are nice. Like it's almost like little bubbles. Now, if this was Valentine's Day. If you wanted to do this, make this Valentine's Day, instead of putting like these, you can make those hearts. That would be super cute to make those hearts, which would be awesome. Um, but I love these. I just love the fact that it matches. And these are my new favorite sequins. So if I can get, if I can find an excuse to put them on, I totally am because I love them so much. Oh, so cute, so cute. Okay. And then let's get our inside. Um, and I cut my inside is usually at, yep, it's, um, five and one eighths by three and seven eighths. And so the happy anniversary was from the itty bitty greetings. And I'm going to use um, the wishing you much happiness today and always. Um, and that is from the so sentimental, which um, I love, 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 love this bundle. Um, the, these are some of my favorite framelits. I just love the framelits in this one. Um, so I'm using that and it's nice and big, which is funny because I use this tiny, tiny whisper, uh, happy anniversary. And then this one's going to be big. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the black. Memento. Make sure I get that nice and dark. I think I'm going to need to re-ink um, my memento. <gasps> so pretty. So nice. Okay, and then, and the reason I like to stamp before I put it in, because then if I mess up, I can just turn it over and do it again. And then I also took two pieces of um, the Coastal Cabana, and it's at four and one and a half, and I just threw it, and I put them, I cut them first, and then I put them in through with the um, Tastely, this is really, this Tasteful Textile. Oh my goodness, I'm having a terrible time remembering the name of that one. And then I'm just going to use some glue. And attach it. So, make sure you get it on the right side. It's fun. So I'm liking this tasteful textile. I like it a lot. Um, it's, it's almost almost as nice as my um, the the soft settle, which is still my favorite. Like I love this the the not soft settle that was in color family. The subtle embossing 3D folder. <laughs> you know, you always get those words the same. There we go. All right. Do do. Oh, I didn't need to put that in the middle. I'm trying to do better at not putting so much glue, but it's really hard. Uh oh. It looks like I cut these at four. Looks like I didn't trim, finish trimming them. I didn't trim them. Okay, so these ones are actually at four and a quarter. I usually trim my um um these little pieces. I didn't this time because I forgot clearly but it looks still looks good so you can have it go all the way across and that's this because I kept it at four and a quarter although I usually just um, do it at four but it looks nice I got glue on the side too 
flip it down so this one's in the back to this one and I did make get glue everywhere on this I put the glue away and when it's drying because I have a little spot of glue too right here I will get out my little eraser and do that but I also like to stamp on the back so this is a really huge stamp so I probably won't stamp that one on the back although it's nice to have that on the inside I'm going to go ahead and stamp my little happy anniversary on the back right here and then actually I'm going to also stamp um, our Stampin' Up logo. I need to get, I need to start getting used to use, doing that again. So you can make your creations and sell them at craft stores or at your church bazaar if you ever get back to doing that stuff. Um, and the Stampin' Up has a um, angel policy that if you want to sell them, all you need to do is add their um, this co our copyright and we have it in a couple of our stamp sets um, the make a different stamp set it's got one of them um, in the back of the of the annual catalog you can get that that little stamp and add that to your projects and you are all copyright ready to um, if you wanted to sell sell any of your um, projects that you use stampin up products with which is super cool and awesome okay so I'm just using my dollar store eraser or you can get these from Amazon it's little craft glue erasers fabulous all right muy bien so there you go is that pretty love 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 so that that owl set so here it is in the um the cinnamon and then here is in the crumb cake so it's definitely lighter it actually maybe goes a little better with the pastels um but I just love that crumb cake uh, the um the cinnamon cider so pretty but it looks nice awesome so there you go so you can do um, an anniversary card with these super cute owls which are very fabulous and like I said you have all the directions on how to make this and it actually says if I had followed my own directions I would have remembered to stamp before I tried to apply it <laughs> to, yeah, um, to the thing but that's how it is you get crafting and you get excited and you keep going right all right awesome okay so I just want to give a few reminders. We've got the Hello Pumpkin. I'm so excited. Like, I, I love Piper Pumpkin all the time because it's that inclusive. Even if you don't have a lot of stuff, you can get that paper pumpkin and um, take it with you. And it's like all inclusive to get your craft. You don't have to think about it. It's all there, right? It's fabulous. Um, but the, Hall the holiday ones are my favorite. I love the Halloween. But luckily, our free for those that don't like Halloween, the Hello Pumpkin that um, you have till September 10th to subscribe, it actually has stuff to make autumn or Thanksgiving. So they have little treat packs that you can make with them, but um, you don't have to do it Halloween. You can do it Thanksgiving or um, autumn, and they have enough pieces in there. So there's going to be a lots of stuff. So that means our alternate projects are going to be awesome because we're going to have so much stuff, right? Fabulous. And like I mentioned, and got you guys got to see a little bit, our um, new, uh, let's see if I have to, I have to pull my thing down. Oh, I can't. Doo -doo -doo. I'm kind of trying to, um, can't find the bar. There it is. <laughs> I have the bar. Um, our stamp and cut emboss. Um, machine is out now so you guys can get that it's 120 dollars um, and it comes with all the plates that you need and our magnetic plate which is our one specialty plate that that doesn't come included with our machine is also available and i've got mine on order it comes tomorrow very very excited very excited and then i am starting something new um i'm doing card kit specials so this one is my very first um card kit special and it is of course using this um fabulous oh my thingy didn't work um uh the card kit special is using the have a hoop bundle and um it has if you order in my online store with the host code with this month's september host code i will send you a card kit to make three different cards and also links give you links to three exclusive pdfs and videos that won't be anywhere else so um, go, you can go on my website and check that out, um, which is pretty awesome. I'm very excited about 
doing these little card kits and hoping, uh, helping you guys when you guys purchase a bundle getting the most out of it so um, I'm really excited about about trying that out so just definitely go on to my website and check that out and again I hope you guys enjoyed um, today's card and I hope you have a great rest of your day and um, have a great weekend happy crafting bye